So behind me, of course, we've got the Doodle Bastard. We're going to be doing a little bit of an update today describing some of the work that I've done to it recently, where I put the starter sprag together. I finally got that going. I figured out the chain the sprockets and got the mounting for the rear wheel set up properly. If you like these videos, guys, don't forget to subscribe. You know, click the little like button and the subscribe button. You need to stick with me and watch these videos. I'm going to be making very frequent updates over the next few weeks, and hopefully we'll have this thing up and riding soon. Well, I finally got the old starter sprag in a position that you can see that it'll freewheel, but it will slip when you turn it in the reverse direction. And I'm going to try to hold the camera in such a way that you guys can both see and listen to it. it just makes an awful nails on a chalkboard kind of sound. So let me just go ahead and prop this camera up here. I'm still using this stupid cell phone camera, and I am just sick and tired of this thing because I still don't have a real camcorder. So here we go. Here it is. See? Turn it the wrong direction. It should be freewheeling one way, which is this way, but that way it just will slip. And actually, it's not as bad now as it was before. It was really making some terrible. It was just like the joint of your knee with no cartilage. It was terrible, terrible sound coming from this thing. Well, anyway, that's crap. Here is the new starter sprag installed, and as I was telling you, the gear is supposed to freewheel in one direction. Now while that motor is turning, you notice how that gear is not, but when I drive the gear, the entire flywheel turns as well. So that's how the starter motor works, that way once the motor is running, the starter doesn't get pushed. There's no reason for the starter to be turning when the engine is already running. So anyway, we got that set up. I've got the 18 tooth sprocket on there along with my chain. <laughs> Look at how close it was to the case. That's about the maximum tolerance that I would put onto this thing. I was thinking maybe I could even go up to a 19, but no, we're going to stop at an 18. Anything beyond 18 is going to require excessive grinding. On the back here, we have the sprocket which came off of a uh, Suzuki four-wheeler from the 80s. I forget what it was exactly, but the chain that's on here I think was a 428. It's adjusted to proper tension right now. The rear wheel mount was not intended to be adjusted. It was permanent. There's supposed to be a uh, chain tensioner which attaches to this little tang over here that uh, caused the chain to be pushed up or down, I don't remember what. But that doesn't matter anymore because we're not using it. I thought about putting a chain tensioner here to hold it up, but uh, what I wound up doing was I just elongated the holes slightly inside of here by not much, about an eighth of an inch to get it to the appropriate tension that I needed it to. And I had a set of uh, moped adjusters from a Pook moped. And yeah, I know you guys are going to get on me about saying pook, but I don't give a shit how you say it. I say pook, and pook is how it's going to be. So these parts are actually made in Austria, while the rest of the bike is all Chinese. I find that to be pretty damn funny. This is probably going to be the last part that fails on the bike. Everything else will go wrong first. Oh, except for this plate. This sprocket adapter here was made in America by the one and only A-Bomb. If you know A-Bomb, you guys should subscribe to his channel. He does excellent, excellent machine work here in Pensacola. And uh, this is actually the reason why I met him. I met him because of the starter sprag years and years ago. I wanted to have him make these bearings for me to put this thing together. Instead, what we wound up doing is he wound up making me a, uh, a sprocket adapter. So. That's good to go. This is uh, coming together. I'm quite pleased with, again, what's going on here. I'm going to finish assembling this motor, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit the starter and make sure that the engine turns over like it's supposed to. And if that's good, then we can proceed to the next part, which is um, getting a little bit of preliminary wiring going on this thing and see if we can get it to fire up. Oh, one more thing, the adjuster. You see it comes out next to the frame here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little little piece of pipe or something that's not much bigger than the diameter of this bolt. And I'm going to weld that to the frame and tighten my nut up against it. And that is what will allow the wheel to be pulled back to the appropriate spot. Yeah, I'm happy. This is good. This is good. I'm going to have to mount the battery probably up here as close as I can get it to the frame, I think. Somewhere up in that area. I do have a fender that goes on here as well. Once I get the fender figured out, then I'll build a little battery shelf and get that going in there too. I also might reinforce these um, the brackets to hold the motor in. I got a feeling that it's going to vibrate enough that these are going to break off, especially the long ones. These long bracket here, this one might crack. 
So what I might do is I'll run another one over here and triangulate it to the frame. We'll see. I might actually run it downwards behind the chain there so it's prettier rather than having it out in the open where you're going to see it. Oh. But there it is. We're going to finish bolting them all together now. All right, we've got the cover all together, and I've got a battery down there. It's a car battery, and it's kind of on a long set of leads. And it's not exactly the best charged, but uh, we're going to go ahead and give it a shot and see if she turns over. Yeah, I would say that's a success. But we're good in that department. Well, the sprocket cover fit over the 18-tooth sprocket. Um, it was close. I actually had to turn the wheel a little bit just so the cover would actually glide in between two of the teeth rather than hitting one of the teeth. Uh, once it was on there, though, it spins freely. It's not actually touching anything. But like I said, if I went even one bit bigger <laughs> to a 19 tooth, this, this never would have fit. But anyway, it's on there good. Um, I got to come up with a couple of things like uh, hooking up the coil wire, which I think I got to mount the coil uh, probably right about here and then run the coil wire to that. I'll cut it and make it a little bit shorter. But the wire wrapped around to the other side rather than showing the coil on that side. Um, the right-hand side of the bike is typically the show side of the bike, opposite of the kickstand. Most bikes lean to the left, therefore the right side is the show side. So all the pretty stuff is going to go on the right. All of the ugly stuff, like the wiring and the, the starter solenoid, i got to figure out where I'm going to mount that up in the frame. Here's the CDI box for the ignition. I have to find a place for that also. It'll probably live back here somewhere underneath the seat somewhere in this void. I'll figure out a spot to put that. And then of course the battery. Here's the battery. A battery similar to this will be mounted right about there. So that should be good to go. And then here comes the fun part. This. I gotta figure out how to make that work. And here's the other part of it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, if you guys know me, one of the things I do for a living is, is wiring, all sorts of wiring, whether it be computer cabling or whether it be wiring automotive or stereo systems or houses or whatever you got. Wires are one of my strong points, so this shouldn't be too big of a deal if I could isolate what it is that I need and throw the rest of it away. Um, we've got some wires here that are burnt and melted. Chances are, if it's burnt and melted, it's going to be an important wire, so I'm going to have to replace some of these bits. I think there's going to be plenty of wire here to do that with, though. A um, couple of things that I want to upgrade. This wiring harness is from those Chinese choppers, by the way. It's Chinese choppers that I used to have. Uh, this wire. This is the starter wire. That is just inadequate. I don't find that to be good enough to start a motor. And this thing, looking at it, some of the insulation's a little bit melted on it, so this wire has definitely been getting hot. So we're going to upgrade that to a bigger wire for sure. This wire here is much bigger, and even that I think is inadequate and probably a little bit small. So I might be upgrading both of those wires to something that you find similar on a, on a Suzuki. Um, I had a Suzuki wire around here somewhere. I was going to show it. Is it down here? There you go. Here's a proper side-by-side -side comparison. The shitty little starter wires that came on this bike are on the bottom, and the proper starter wire is on the top. I'm going to be rewiring it with this big wire here, uh, for sure. It's just going to be much better um, cranking amperage to that starter motor. It's also going to be less likely to fry or overheat. And that was one of the weak points on this bike was the um, starter mechanisms. The engine really wasn't too bad. The starter sprag was a piece of crap. And the starter mechanism itself, the kickstarter on the other side, I think was just weak. So if you used it excessively or in the wrong way or you kicked against the compression like an idiot or some other shit, you'll strip it out. And that's one of the problems this motor had also. And uh, I, I dealt with the electrical side. I probably won't be using the kickstarter side at all because it's not going to clear the foot peg. So we're going to stay away from that. But I'll get these wires upgraded and uh, this should suit it just fine. I think it'll be good after that. I got the tabs welded on for the voltage regulator and the tabs for the coil. Got the coil wire routed all the way around the motor using one of the old clips from the chopper to back around the other side. So the coil is on the left side so it'll be nice and hidden. The motor's together, starter sprag is in place, chain is mounted and looks like it's good and the wheel adjusters are custom fit. I put the exhaust on just for a mock-up. I'm going to be playing with that a little bit until I get it the way I want it. This is dual exhaust, of course. There's one on each side. At this point, I'm going to get this thing cleaned up and start doing some wiring. So, until next week, we're good to go. So stay tuned for this one. A lot more updates coming up soon.